Jeff Stone here with take three of magicreview.com. We are on day 23 of 2015, and we're looking at the ultimate book test act by Luca Volpe today. So here's what you get real quick. You get a little 12-page booklet of instructions. You get book number one, book number two. This is uh, H.G. Uh, Wells' Time Machine, and this is uh, At the Mountains of Madness by Lovecraft. I don't know if that's a real book or not, but they look like real books, so good enough. They're gimmicked, and we'll talk about um, what they do right now. Basically, uh, here's the effect so that you are aware of what exactly you're going to be getting if you buy this. So, you start off, it's a free choice, you get two people up on stage and you say, okay, we're going to use one of these books, doesn't matter which one, pick one, and then you use one for both of them. The other one just gets put away or whatever. There's probably a way to work it out to use them both. Um, it didn't really talk much about that in the, in, it didn't talk about that at all, in fact, in the, the instructions, but I, it wouldn't be that hard to use them both. But that aside, the instructions teach you to use one book, and then you give it to spectator number one. You say, open up to any page you want, and they can. It's a free choice. And you know, pick the left page or the right page, whatever, and then look at the very last word on the page and memorize it. Okay, so now I've, I'm spectator number one. I'm memorizing the last word on page whatever I just looked at. Hand the book over to spectator number two and say, again, any page you'd like, and read the first paragraph in your mind. Don't read it out loud. And in there, find see if you can find a word that is an object, something that could be easily drawn. And so you go back to spectator number one, and you try to read his mind to figure out what word he's thinking of. And you can't. He's locking you out. You can't get in. So you're like, all right, hold off. Let's go to spectator number two. And let's say, um, think of the object that you're thinking of from that paragraph. And then you basically do a design dupe, right? You draw a picture of the object, show it. You're right. He goes and sits down. Now you go back to spectator number one and try to read the word he's thinking of. And you just, you can't, no matter how hard you try, nothing. You can't do it. So you decide to do a little experiment with the audience to try to open your mind to get the, the communication channels flowing. And so you throw out four balled up pieces of paper out to the audience. Whoever gets them, you know, four different people, they all stand up. You give them the same book that you guys have been using. And you ask the first person that got a balled up paper, turn to any page and just think of the first word on that page. Give it to the guy next to you, have him turn to a page, or you know, the other guy with the paper ball. Think of the first word. Another guy, another page, first word, another person, another page, first word. So now there are four of them are thinking of the, the first word of the page that they looked at. Got it? Okay. So far, so good. Now you name each of the words they're thinking of, and you get all four of them right. They sit down. So now your juices are flowing, right? So you go back to spectator number one that you couldn't read his mind, and you still can't do it, and you just give up. And you go, all right, dude, I can't get it. What was the word you're thinking of? Um, and he tells you the word and you go, wait a minute, that's that. Now it all makes sense. This morning I had a premonition and it was of a word that had four letters in it. Uh, or it wasn't, it was of uh, four random letters and I wrote the letters down on pieces of paper and then I just crumbled them up and, and I, I just threw them in my bag or my, my pocket or whatever. And those are the papers I threw out to the audience. Everybody open up your papers and it has, each one has a letter on it and those letters spell the word he was thinking of. That's the the entire effect. So um, Luca Volpe's big thing that he's saying and claiming is that uh, he never really liked the way book tests ended and he always felt the need to sort of a big ending and this was his solution to that. Um, so that's basically what you're getting. Uh, so if you like it or not, I, it's uh, that's up to you. I, you know, wh whether I like that idea or not is irrelevant. But I could see myself doing something like that. There's a couple tweaks I would make to the performance that I don't like. But generally speaking, I think it's a good concept. But that aside, this is all about reviewing method, ad copy, and uh, product quality. And the reason I spent so much time on the effect is they don't really explain it in the ad copy anywhere. Uh, even the little video trailer, uh, Luca Volp just says, I'm proud to present to you this effect. It shows the product and says, and I'm especially proud of the ending. And then the video stops. There's no way he doesn't explain what his ending is, beginning is. So now you know. That's the routine that you're beginning. Um, so let's talk about uh, method. The method are these books. They do all the work for you. Um, they're gimmicked. 
uh, but they're gimmicked in such a way that if you do everything I just said, hand the book out, have them open to any page, and it'll, they'll be fine. Um, and they, they're, I wouldn't call them examinable, but they're handleable by the spectator. So to me, they're fine. Um, so that's basically it. There's really not much more to it. This is very much a presentation piece. Um, as far as skill level, there's none. So any skill level, this is, you know, technical skill, this is fine. Uh, however, if you're not a very good presenter, this is not for you. You need to be able to present this and, and have a stage persona to pull this off. Uh, so how about uh, ad copy? There are only two issues I have with the ad copy, and they're minor. Uh, one, use the, co the phrase, um, not a force book test, uh, or no force book test. Well, it depends how you look at it. And I use this in the written example, or written review as an example. Imagine I've got a one-way deck. They're all, you know, the seven of spades or whatever. Um, and I spread it out to the spectator who doesn't know they're all seven of spades. And I say, pick any card you want. Completely free choice of all 52 cards. And they pick one. Is that a force? I mean, it was a free choice of which which uh, card they chose, which of the 52, which, a uh, better way to say it, it was a free choice of which seven of spades they would pick. But ultimately, they picked a seven of spades. So ultimately, they were forced to seven of spades. Now, it's not like this book is every single page has the exact same thing on it, right? Uh, so here's, you know, one page. You can take a quick look, and then I'll turn the page, and it's different. Okay, so anyway, so it's not like you know, it's it's not like the one way deck. I wasn't trying to say the book was like that, but conceptually, it's kind of what happens here is yes, it's a free book choice. Yes, it's a free choice of which page you turn to, but you're still ultimately forcing some stuff on them. So that's just a little bit off. Yeah, all the choices are free, but those choices always lead to the same place. So, um, that aside, uh, the other thing was it said that it covers every little nuance necessary to make your performance powerful and memorable. I, a book this thin, guys, can't cover every little nuance of anything. Okay? Um, so, it, I mean, it, it literally just, here's the introduction. Next page is the effect. Describe, I'm not going to show it to you because it does expose some things in there. Uh, but there's the effect here, and then the next page is the explanation of the gimmicks in the book, you know, the secret. And then the next page is the script. And then after that is, uh, here's an idea that it's, it's literally one paragraph, and it's just an alternate idea that you could use in part of the routine. And then um, it has some details about that alternate idea. And then it has sort of a chair test um thing uh, idea that you can incorporate into it uh that would replace the fold of the bald out papers that's it there's really no nuances or anything it's just basically pretty bare bones and he even says in here that i don't have a i don't like to put live videos of um, myself performing these effects because i want you to come up with your own presentation so he's he's even sort of admitting in the book that he's just giving us bare bones but it's fine. It wasn't. It's not a huge hit, you know. Just know what you're getting. Um, and there are some details in there, obviously, but I wouldn't say every or all the little nuances. I certainly wouldn't have used that phrase. So that aside, how's the product quality? The books look great. Um, there's only one thing that bugs me a little bit here, um, which let me just crack open a page here. Look at the the paragraphs how they're bunched together. Do you see that? They're, they're not um, indented and they're bumped up against each other. Real books don't do that. But, um, do I have a, yeah, here's a book here. Let me just see if I can find a page to show you. I know you're gonna think I'm nitpicking, but hold, hold on, hold your thoughts, hold your anger. So here's a, from Bob Neal's book here. Yeah, it just, you know, there's paragraph indentation so you can clearly see where the paragraph breaks are. So, now, it's not like you're handing this book to the spectator and they're just reading the book and they're going to go, wait a minute, that's hard to read because of the paragraphs. I'm not worried about that. But looking at it, it doesn't look like a real book looks. And it, to me, it's a little bit, I, I look at it, I'm like, ah, oh, that doesn't look right. Now, a spectator up on stage being handed a book, tell them to open it up and read a paragraph, probably not a problem. But I just thought I'd point it out in case anybody cared. So, uh, the only other ad, uh, product quality issue I had was 
in the corner of my book there. Um, I think that was a shipping problem, uh, but also look at how oh, it's kind of, uh, it's hard to see. Yeah, there you go. Big fat wrinkle right there by H.G. Wells' name. Um, so that's a printing issue. These are probably print-on-demand books. And so that's probably a printing issue there. But that corner is probably a shipping issue. But this book looks fine. Uh, there's a little wrinkle there. Um, so, uh, but, you know, they're books. And, you know, here's a real live book. You might recognize this from the Max Maven videos set. Um, but, you know, it's beat up because it's a book that, you know, you people put books in their bag and they use them and they get beat up. So whatever. You know, it may be the fact that there are some little wrinkles in there is a good thing. I don't know. Ultimately, all in all, I gave this four and a half star Stone Status of Jim. So, yeah, I pointed out quite a few little minor, you know, niggly negative things there. But nothing serious. Um, so if you like the effect that I described, then get this. It's good. It's 95 bucks, and for the, considering the fact that you're getting two books um, that are custom made and everything, and that it, that it's basically self-working, I think that's a reasonable price for it. Larry Becker makes book test books, and they're typically that price or higher for his sets. So I think that's a reasonable price. Um, and other book tests that I've seen that are custom like that. So, again, price is fine. Uh, bottom line, if you like the concept, if you're a book test person, this is definitely one to consider. Um, if you like book tests in general, if you collect book tests, you can definitely get this one. It's very good uh, as far as the quality and everything goes. And it's just a matter of taste if you like that idea for a routine. I actually think it's a pretty good routine. Uh, and I will toss out an idea for you guys if you want to do this. Um, I don't like the, the he uses this to close his act. So I don't like the closing of my act. Um, well, before I tell you that, the review's over. Four and a half stars, stone status of gem. If you like the product, get it. If, um, if you like the, the effect, get it. So now, just a little tip from me as a magician. Um, I, I don't like closing my act where I have to give up and say, I can't read your mind. What word were you thinking of? I don't like that idea at all. I would never do that. So, but I also get the problem of, well, you can't read his mind and then say, oh, I predicted it. So you don't want to do that either. That's sort of a weird little thing. Because um, why are you struggling to read his mind if you already knew what he was going to think, right? So what I would do is I would still do the whole struggling to read his mind thing. But then I would I would go, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting it. And I would act shocked like, wait, oh, this is weird. You're Are you thinking of the word, you know, whatever. The, you know, the word, you know, uh, water. I don't know, whatever. Uh, are you thinking of the word uh, water? Or I guess it would have to be a four-letter word. So are you thinking of the word coin? Um, and he says, yeah. And I said, man, that's really weird. Because this morning I had this premonition uh, of these four random letters. And they happen to be, they spell out, the, look, open up your papers. Look at what it spells out. These are the words I was thinking of. So I would, so I would spin it that way. That was just a rough little description of it. Uh, to me, that's a little bit more, uh, that's a little better than just going, I can't figure it out. What's your word? All right. Shut up, Jeff. It's 13 and a half minutes long. Sorry, my review videos get too long, guys. It's time for you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and listen to the random iTunes song of the moment, which is, oh my gosh, Control by Janet Jackson. That's what, what year did that come out? 1986? I remember the video was pretty cool. And I remember that song she had called Nasty Boys. That was, uh, I would always tease my mom about that. that. was my mom's favorite song. I would say that to her and then she would sing it. <laughs> anyway, uh, the memories of being a child of the 80s. That's it for this video today, guys. Tomorrow is day 24, where not only am I reviewing Voices by Jeff Price, but uh oh, Jeff's got two copies of Jeff's video. So, guess what that means? Somebody tomorrow is getting one of these. That's right. After Well, hold that thought. That's assuming that it gets a four-star or better rating. If not, I'm not going to give away a bad product. But assuming it gets a good rating, which I'm hoping it will. Jeff Price's stuff is usually pretty solid. Uh, this will be the giving away tomorrow. Uh, so how do you win it tomorrow? I don't know yet. I'm going to tell you in the video tomorrow, so make sure you watch tomorrow. January 24th tomorrow. So that's day 24 tomorrow. I think I said that already. Watch the video and you'll find out how to win. Thanks for watching, guys.
Peace out. <laughs>